Reese, what did it mean for you to get that Defensive Player of the Year award again, especially knowing that one of your teammates was in the hunt as well? I know it, it meant a lot. You know, um, I think it just goes to show the work that we that I put in over the four years um, that led up to it. Um, like I said at the beginning of the year, I know it was going to be a battle between me and Ryan. I honestly didn't know who it was going to come down to, but you know, glad to get the award, and I'm glad he got his recognition as well. Isaac, as a, as a shooter, what is take us kind of inside like the subtle differences when you go into a new arena, an NBA arena. I know it's a different shooter's backdrop, and coach is talking about you know less warm up time in the tournament. What changes for a shooter that makes that a, a challenging setting? Well, I try not to change anything. You know, that's that's the goal for sure. But you know, like you said, with the backdrop and everything, it's definitely different. But I like to refer to the scene from Hoosier's movie when they walk into the big gym and he measures the rim and it's just 10 feet. So just, you know, realizing that it's just 10 feet, you know, same same distance, same three-point line and everything else, just trying to realize that and just, you know, do my normal routine, just try to keep everything the same, not trying to change anything and just, you know, go out there and shoot it like I normally do. Yeah, Reese, you've been around the program for a while. Usually, Tony, when you get to postseason play, it's about seven, eight guys that are really seeing minutes. What is – Kind of that that flow during the season, guys competing for minutes. You saw Tane last week kind of finally get his opportunity. Just kind of what is that competition like leading up the postseason? Uh, yeah, you know, practice is always competitive. I think that just makes us better. And, you know, I feel like Coach Bennett, he's, um, you know, throughout the whole season he was figuring out lineups, figuring out guys. And, you know, each night it's going to be a different guy stepping up and making plays. So, you know, we still got time to make adjustments and even these late games. So, I mean, I think everybody is still, you know, prepared to play. Everybody's coming in with that right mindset and just um, ready for their number to be caught. Yeah, Coach was just saying for returning players, he'll ask them the question like, okay, if you played yourself last year one-on-one, -on -one, would you dominate, would you beat yourself from last year? So has he asked you that question and, and what did you say to that? Um, I don't think we got asked that question yet this year, but um, – to the answer, I'll, I'll say I think I'm beating my last year self. Um, I think just the overall player is just more confident. Um, you know, been here another year, um, just knowing you know more as a leader as well. So I feel like those those things were from last year to this year have grown. Yeah, for both of you guys, this is probably the first time since I don't know maybe 12, 2012. What it's been a while that you've gone to the ACC tournament as a program kind of in that bubble territory where you feel like you really need to cement things. How does that change your mindset? What kind of pressure does that put on you? And how do you all handle that? Um, you know, I think obviously we're aware we're on the bubble and everything else, but we try to just tune that out and just, you know, control what we can control. You know, if we go in there and win a couple games, then I feel confident that we'll be in. But, you know, we're not bracketologists. We don't choose who gets to be in. So we're just going to go out there and, you know, our goal is to win the ACC tournament and get the automatic uh, bid. So, you know, that's what we're going to go try and do for sure. Yeah, I think we're just going to – we want to come in with a clear mindset. You know, win or lose, we got to give it our best. And, of course, we know where we're at. But, you know, we – I mean, I know myself, I try not to think about it too much. I think the guys don't worry about it too much as well. So, you know, just build off last game and try to build momentum. For for both of you guys, you're you know some of the few on the team who have been through this experience of the ACC tournament. What's the message to the other guys on the team about the mentality of approaching the ACC tournament, especially when you're in that unique situation where you're not you don't know who you're going to play until late the night before the game? Yeah, I'll say just we gotta you know we gotta focus on us going in. You know these games, it comes down to you know who can make the less mistakes and you know who can get to their game game first. So I feel like. If we do a good job at that, I think I like our chances, and we just got to come prepare for anybody that we play. Yeah, kind of like he said, just going in there with a clear mindset, um, having a good couple of days of practice here, and then trying not to think too highly of the situation. You know, it's just another game. Obviously, the stakes are a little bit higher, but, you know, just trying to go in there with a clear mindset and just see it as just any other game. And, you know, I think we'll be all right. Um, but just going out and playing with full heart, um, and, you know, with the mindset to win the whole thing, you know, that's how it should be. And I think we have a chance. So that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, Isaac, a lot of teams have made it, gone way out of their way to try to shut you down on the three-point line this year. What, what's some of the craziest things you've had done to you from, from some of the defenses? <laughs> um, I mean, I get a lot of jersey pulling. That's probably the, 
the thing I get the most. I know, you know, I talk to the refs about it sometimes to tell them to watch out for it because it happens a lot. But, you know, I think that's just a compliment to me is, is how they're guarding me. So, you know, we're just trying to figure out ways to work around that. And I got to figure out ways to, you know, stay in the game even when I'm getting denied like that. So I, w I would say like the jersey tugging and stuff like that is probably just some of the stuff I go through, I guess. Yeah, Isaac, you, and you were in this spot last year where you hadn't played in the postseason before. What, what, what do you remember about just the difference going from the regular season to these postseason? You know, the benches get shortened, you know, maybe a little bit more physical. Just kind of what do you remember about that switch and play? Yeah, I know, you know, growing up as a kid, you always dream of playing the ACC tournament or March Madness. So, I, you know, I was really nervous going into it for sure. But, you know, like I said earlier, just trying to play like it's a, another game. And, you know, just going out there and doing the best control we can control. And, you know, on last year's team, you know, I was like a 20-minute per game guy. So, I, you know, I just had to go in and, you know, be solid, just like do what I needed to do. But I think this year I have a little bit more on my shoulders, a bigger role this year. So um, it's a little bit different mindset. But I think last year, you know, just going into it control by control and just playing my hardest, that's all you can do. So that's what I'm going to do. Reese, I asked Coach about the idea of, you know, there being more pressure in the tournament. And he said there's kind of been pressure for like the last week and a half. You guys have known – how big these games are. Have you felt that, like when the ball tips? Have you felt that there's a little something extra here coming down the stretch for you? Uh, I mean, b kind of before the game, a little bit, like going in, and, like I kind of, you know, prepare for the game. And like during practice and stuff, I kind of, you know, lock in a little earlier than usual just to, you know, kind of put myself in a game situation. But when the game tips off, it's kind of like we're in the moment. Um, you know, I'm trying to play my usual self, not put too much added pressure on myself because I know that can cause problems. But, you know, I just try to stay stay true to myself and I try to encourage my teammates to do the same. Uh, Reese, uh, when teams are trying to cover up Isaac like they have, um, how much more pressure does that put on you to try to create some offense? And, and what are you looking for? Uh, yeah, I think it, it actually frees up you know, the spacing a little bit with this guy being so hugged up on him, it kind of creates, you know, lanes for me and others to, you know, go make plays. But, you know, as a point guard, you still have to try to find, you know, some of your best guys, you know, so I still look to get him open shots when he's open, um, try to have guys to set more screens for him to get open. So, you know, just staying true to the offense. But, you know, that's definitely a, you know, that helps me out a lot if they're guarding him like that. Isaac, in a similar vein, Tane's play in the Georgia Tech game at other moments has kind of helped you guys spread the floor, mm -hmm. help maybe take a little pressure off you. What does Tane bring when he's out there and, and hitting shots and, and also driving to the rim like he did? Yeah, Tane, I think his aggressiveness was the biggest thing that kept him on the floor. Obviously, he was scoring and making plays, but I think just his aggressiveness to get downhill and his aggressiveness to take his shot when it's there, I think that really opens up the offense because um, sometimes we got – you know, open shots, maybe we're passing up or something like that. And we can't we can't afford to do that. You know, we gotta take the shots when they're there. And I thought Tane did a great job of, you know, coming off the bench and making an impact immediately with his aggressiveness and just, you know, his heart. You know, he works so hard. He he's he's earned this you know, he's earned this. So I'm super proud of him for that.